Hello everybody, how's it going? It's me, Krendor, and today we're going to be checking out Spellforce Conquest of EO. Uh, thank you to Spellforce and THQ Nordic for sponsoring this video. Uh, so, what is Spellforce Conquest of EO? It is a single-player turn-based strategy game, and it's available on PC right now. Uh, choose from one of three archetypes and six spell lists, AI opponents and factions with their own agenda. You can build out your tower and determine your wizard's path. You can craft anything from magical glyphs and artifacts to undead minions. Explore over 600 adventures different with each procedurally generated campaign. Recruit individual heroes and apprentices, apprentices to lead your troops. And make the living interactive grimoire reveal new secrets and spells to you. Uh, if you want to check this out, there will be a link in the description you can click. And it will take you to the page where you can get the game for yourself. But I'm going to go ahead and just start up a campaign so you, you can actually see what's going on in this game. So we choose our arch type, arch, 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 arch type. <laughs> I always get those words mixed up. Uh, or like, can you say arch type and archetype? Like, are they both correct? Either way, you can be an alchemist. A master of bottled elements, brew potions, concoctions to support your soldiers in combat, summon magical creatures, and control nature itself. That sounds pretty fun. Playstyle, you prefer lots of options in combat to overcome the odds which clever with clever use of your resources. Uh, then we have Necromancer, an artist of life and death. Har you harvest souls from bodies of the fallen to create your horde and flood the lands with your servants. Prefer big armies, but will happily sacrifice individual units. We have the Artificer. Creator of magical items, craft glyphs and artifacts to provide your troops with a multitude of different upgrades and rest secrets from the earth itself for quality over quantity and like to buff up individual units. And then we have a custom mage where you can be whatever you want, create your own. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I kind of either want to be alchemist or necromancer. Maybe... Uh... You know, I kind of want to go with Necromancer. But then again, controlling nature itself. Summoning magical creatures. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go Alchemist. I don't know. Wait, what? I just clicked past something. Uh, choose your starting location. We have the Golden Fields. Peaceful Valley is the breadbasket of the Highmark. Bugs have recently infested the fields and granaries. So we got a pleasant challenge with goblins, bandits, and insects. Cultivated plants, sparse and ore, uh, and civilized central region. Then we have Alluvian, forest and lakes fill this region, populated by elves once. Dangerous beasts roam the forest and rich wildlife, uh, rich in wildlife, and the fanatics of the new purity extend their grasp here. This is like could be a good one for me. Religious fanatics and beasts, because like, you know, I control nature and stuff. There's forests, diverse flora. Then we got Draycott, deep in the North Windwall Mountains. The dwarves here are busy mining precious metals. Recent events have seen an uprising of the Granite Dwarf faction. Uh, you got dwarves, mountain beast monsters, rich in ore, tough, remote mountain region. And, uh, oh, this one's another tough. This one's brutal. Gillyshire, this easternmost region of the Highmark, is struggling with orcish raiders draining its resources. Lately, the undead have been pushing in from the north as well. Uh, orc undead in the hive, cultivated flora, iron deposits, remote war-torn region. And then a small orcish settlement has been established here recently, holding on for survival. A coastal region covered in a thick mist. Swamp monsters, <laughs> orcs and swamp monsters, corrupted plants and ore, remote coastal region, brutal. This might be the best one to learn with, though. Uh... Okay, you know what? I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna go Necromancer now and go to the easy one. I think it fits a little better. Uh, oh, you can choose your difficulty anyway. <laughs> Alright, well maybe maybe I won't do that then. Occasional attacks on tower. Rare attacks on tower. Um, Regular, regular, brutal onslaught. Alright, we're... <laughs> I feel like Explorer is probably going to be my best bet here. I like time to explore, occasional attacks, weaker stacks, balance forgiving. Yeah. Um, I guess if that's the case, I could go the other one. Okay, I'm just... <laughs> I'm all over the place now. Let's, uh... 
Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a super baby mode. Okay, we'll do this. We're going to do story mode. Well, yeah, we're going to do baby mode first, okay? And then after like a little bit of learning the game, then I'm going to pop out and go to the next one. That's a, that's a good strategy, I think. We'll see. Humans, elves, and dwarves are descendants of the shapers carrying to protect his work. To this day, they guide and watch over his creation. The Shaper. Uh, this game actually looks really cool, so I'm excited to see how it plays. When a message from your master told you he had discovered a way to channel the Allfire and urged you to come to his tower, you quickly gathered your entourage and set out. The letter contained a little more than his note and a small flute. Ex exquisitely carved and bearing your mastered sigil. He seemed to fear running afoul of the Circle of Mages, the most powerful covenant of magic users on EO. His tower, now before you, bears signs of a terrible battle having raged there. So here's the master's tower. There's a main adventure here. You will have to resolve it to proceed with the main story and ultimately win the game. You should always prioritize attempting to uh, or attempting these adventures to further your progress. Okay. Your home and study emits your domain. Units here regenerate 100% health daily. Uh, and then here is me. So, should I go to the tower? The corpses and debris marking the fight inside the great hall of your master's tower fill you with grief for him. Instinctively, your hands go to the flute he sent you with his letter. You trace the fine carvings with your fingers, and memories of your time here flood your mind. Suddenly, the flute seems to hum and vibrate, and a small sound emanates from it. The sound morphs into a flute melody, and with it, shadowy images slowly begin to appear across the hall. Figures take form, becoming more solid and taking shape of two groups facing each other, weapons drawn. You see your old master leading one of the groups. This must be a battle for the tower. Uh, I will take a combat tutorial, thank you. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Harvesting plants yields many useful ingredients, not just for alchemists. All right, here we are. Combat is at the heart of your path to victory. It is played in alternating turns and ends when one side has been vanquished. Defending army begins. <laughs> Dude, I love that sound. It sounds like when you take a metal, you know those like really like or plastic, you know those big plastic sheets and you just kind of whack it up and down like I hope you know. Uh, or is it metal? Either way. Now is your time to act. Select individual units and give them orders. Once everyone has acted, end your turn. Each unit has three actions. You may spend all of them to attack, execute abilities, or use up two movement. Okay. So we got, we got move. We got melee attack. We have guard. Your standard classics. Let's go hit these guys. Why not? Okay. Now they hit back. They retaliated because it was attacked in melee combat. Each retaliation uses up an action. So if a unit retaliates three times, it cannot further retaliate. It won't have any actions left in its own turn. Oh, interesting. So you can kind of bait out retaliations. An ice golem is an elemental being. Very good in defense and at taking brunt the brunt of most enemies' attacks. Instead of attacking, you should guard with it so that it takes even less damage during your opponent's turn. Its cold snap ability can be used to damage and debuff enemies in an area around it, but it isn't very effective against demons. Uh... Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> can I move up and then guard? Maybe that's what I can do. Guard. Execute. Okay, there we go. So he's guarding now. Phantom Warriors. These Phantom Warriors are ethereal creatures with high physical and elemental resistances. Perfect for this opponent, as demons deal these types of damage. Their white damage attacks bypass their opponent's elemental resistance and armor. Instead, the attacks are mitigated by their lower willpower. Okay. Well, let's go hit them then. <laughs> Perfect. Doop, doop, doop. All right, they retaliate again. Uh, and then back here, we have the Pyromancers. Dwarven Pyromancers are masters of elemental damage that cast fireballs from afar. They are weak in close combat, but have several useful spells at their disposal. 
Elemental weaknesses make enemies more susceptible to elemental damage, while flame armor improves the defenses of one of your own units. Alright, let's move up. And then... Let's see... Flame armor, fireball... Hmm... Might just nuke this unit down, you know? Um... Yeah, I'm all about offense. Let's go. The opponent has sent demons against you. These ferocious, close combat fighters have high elemental resistance and armor, so they take less damage from your unit's elemental attacks. Try weakening their resistance with your pyromancers or engage them with phantom warriors, which deal white damage. Uh, all right. Well, I will do the elemental weakness then. Some units have special abilities they can use in combat. These can be magic spells, devastating attacks, but about abilities usually require focus. Use as well as the number of actions. Focus is a finite resource, so use it wisely. Uh, alright. So. I mean, I'll hit him with the elemental weakness. Uh, but maybe I should hit a different one. Hold on. Oh, wait, no, it's a big AoE area. Uh. I got you. Wait, did I cast it? Oh, I think I need to right-click. Hold on. Elemental weakness. There we go. Yeah, I had to right-click. Perfect. And that's my turn. You just ended your turn. Any unit with actions left will enter the guard stance. Guard increases unit's defense, makes it control the hexes around it, and makes it immune to flanking. Units also replenish their three actions at the end of their turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Hit him with that retaliation. Very good. Oh, he's doing a fire breath. A flanking attack deals increased damage and stops the opponent from retaliating against the first blow. As they have to turn towards the attacker first. To gain flanking, attack a unit from outside their zone of control indicated by the yellow markers next to the unit. Activating your guard ability will extend the unit's zone of control, making it immune to flanking. Some abilities may confer status effects on a unit. These can be beneficial such as protection or harmful, such as bleeding or burning. Status effects usually last for the remainder of the battle, but can be cleansed by some abilities. Alright. Well, I kind of want to do his cold snap thing. I think that's kind of fun. Uh, let's go loving that uh let's see if we can just kill these right straight up nice okay we got them then maybe we can fireball this lizard uh i guess they're all kind of <laughs> hmm Maybe I should give this guy flame armor. Can I give everybody flame armor? Hold on. Oh, I think I'm out of range. Hold on, can I move up? And then... Flame armor? There we go. Nice. And... I believe that's everybody. Wait, they didn't attack, did they? Oh, wait, yeah, I did. Never mind. Uh... Yeah, that's everything. I don't see any other actions. Boom! Boom! <laughs> Boom! Alright. They really want to hit this golem, man. They do not like that golem. There we go. Nice little retaliation. And killed him. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and hit these guys. Okay, another one down. Let's do a fireball. Pew! Nice, he's burning. Oh, you hit three times. That's spicy. Uh, Let's see. Can I... I can get all the way over here. Okay. And it's all I can do. 
Fight back. Retaliate. 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 Yay! Let's go. All right. Honestly, combat's pretty fun. I enjoyed that. I like the uniqueness of the uh, units. Let's see. You're ma you're filled with hope and the touch of confusion as your master forces dispatch the intruders. Another robe figure enters the picture. With a leisurely wave of their hand, your master's remaining forces helplessly dissolve into ash. His silent cries of agony etched into their faces. The ash is scattered to the wind, and the robed figure walks towards the stairs as if nothing happened. Follow them. All of a sudden, the figure turns on you, raises their hand, and the flute's illusionary image vanishes abruptly. Did the magic end, or did the robed figure cast some kind of abjuration to prevent it being spied upon? You find yourself nervously looking around for any sign that the robed figure is still here, but the tower lies empty. Impressions of fighting still play on in your mind as you slowly walk up the dented stairway. The tower, damaged and deserted, still retains your master's presence somehow, willing you onward. Whatever happened here will not be forgotten. You are sure there is more to discover. Your master is always adept at hiding his secrets, but you are determined to uncover them. You take stock. The entry hall's golden chandelier has been stolen and its soft carpets are gone. Your master's tower is not just attacked, but robbed. On closer inspection, there are several tracks out of the tower. Traces of torn fabrics and dropped cutlery lead to a goblin camp not far from here. Go to the goblin camp and find the thieves. All right. So we got loot stashes come in various forms, can be collected by moving on to it. This is your tower, it's your home and study where trained troops will appear in your magical zone of influence called your domain emits from. You should, should your tower be taken by enemies, your career as a mage is over. So don't lose your tower. <laughs> uh, domain indicated by the border, collect resources and effects from buildings as well as influencing the combat abilities of friendly enemies, uh, enemy stacks within it. Uh... Most buildings deplete after a while when inside a domain. Mage's domain grows with their tower level. Okay. So we've got this dude and then we have units. This is the unit screen, which provides detailed information on selected units. On the right, there are units active and passive abilities. On the left is the units display, its current level and experience bar. Once a unit has gained enough experience, you can also level it up. All right, so we got some goblins here. Little goblin warriors. They got melee attack, move guard. They're expendable. <laughs> They're feral. Uh, so they get bonus against shielded. Uh, devout follower, no upkeep cost. They're goblins, so they have lower health and willpower. Uh, they're mortals, and they're within our domain. Taking a look at the necromancer minions here. They got death bolts. Uh, soul catcher. Unit soul is trapped and will drop after battle. Spicy. Swimming can traverse rivers waters. Uh, death bolts. Death, deal 20 death damage to an enemy unit in 5 range. Okay. So I guess we'll go to the goblin camp. Attack the looters. So here's a combat preview. You can see the enemy stack strength compared to your own uh, and predicted outcome of using auto resolve. At the bottom of the screen, you can choose to fight, auto resolve, or abort. Uh, battle takes place in a mage's domain. The main affects battles or battling units in various ways. So we gain willpower, armor, and damage. And heroic victory. <laughs> Uh, is what we would get. So let's just wrap this one up. Your surviving units gain loot and experience based on enemies. So what do we get? We got Greater Vigorous Soul. Gives 20 health. We got Bandages that stop bleeding. And plus two under Undiscovered Faction. The Not Quiet Camp is littered with goblin corpses. Co corpses? Corpses. <laughs> They're carrying and using some of your master's tools, as well as a small amount of coin. Gold... Rations. We got some dwarven ignition <laughs> and lesser glyph healthy. All right. As you turn to leave, a few goblins emerge from hiding behind one of the dirty tents. One of them, wearing a hood made of a torn silken cloth, waves excitedly at you. You, I remember you. One of Master's pupils, yes, yes. We serve Masters. 
Uh, well, ma <laughs> master, not like these. Chagrack here. He spits at the dead goblins emphatically. Bowing, he adds, We serves you now, yes, yes. You gives us shiny. We fight for you. Shows you where ma more master th things is, yes. Show me then. Goblin points to two stacks of chests and sacks not far from where you stand. Surely this won't be a trap. <laughs> There's no way. Uh... Hiring from domain. Liberating certain corpses or certain <laughs> locations from within your domain allows you to hire specific units from your tower. This goblin then enables you to hire goblin brawlers, goblin archers, and goblin shamans now. Access your hiring screen from the tab in the top left of your screen to hire new units. Okay, so we got hiring, inventory, and tower. So here's tower. This is an overview of your towers, floors, and rooms. Uh, as progress, new stuff happens. So you can build a room. We got room blueprints require several turns to be built so we got the necromancy crypt the study or the workshop this only takes one turn so we're probably gonna do this one <laughs> build all right and we got inventory uh, as you can tell it's an inventory you can sell unwanted items for gold and unwanted souls for mana Drag and drop an item here, or hover an item and use a cell hotkey to sell. Oh, that's pretty nice, at least. I mean, I don't know if I need anything or if it's bad, so I'm not going to sell anything yet. And then, we have hiring. Hire units from the screen. The higher a unit's tier, the stronger that unit is, but the longer the process will take and the higher the upkeep cost will be afterwards. Expand the list of available units by capturing locations on the strategic map or building tower rooms. Looks like we got goblin brawlers and goblin archers. So I already have brawlers, but there's some archers. They have little <laughs> archer caps. They got the ranged attacks. Oh, I'll hire some. Let's get some goblin archer. Oh, we also have goblin shamans. Look at this guy. I like that he's got a dwarf head on a stick on his back. <laughs> Uh, he's got electro ball. Deal 14 white damage to an enemy unit in five range. He has a healing spell, healing spores. Heal 15 health of each allied unit in one radius around position in four range. Uh, applies Berserk Shrooms. Every goblin ally in this unit stack gains two willpower, two damage. I mean, that's pretty nice too. But I think I'm just going to hire some basic goblin archers for now. You can only do so much at once. Your crafting and hiring slots are limited. Uh, increased number within your domain or biting rooms. Okay. Perfect. So we've done that. Do these guys level up? Oh yeah, here we go. They leveled up. So they level up there. Speed one or six damage against units with armored. Do I have to pick one? Yes. <laughs> All right, there we go. And then the other one will level up. And they get armor speed. I'll give them speed. So one fast one and he one heavy hitting one. All right, perfect. So. Let's go over here. Oh. Once you've completed all your actions, press the unturn button. And your turn. Can I get over here? No. I swim the turn. Necromancer's Crypt constructed. Ooh, you wander the old familiar rooms of the tower, lost in the memories of your time here as an apprentice. The place was clearly searched through before the goblins ransacked it. Your master's crafting room has been depleted, most of the other chambers ravaged. Whoever did this left no stone unturned. Buried beneath a toppled bookcase in your master's gutted library, you find his old grimoire. Rever reverently. Did I say that right? You open the heavy tome. Many of its beautifully illustrated pages have been torn out, but you still see bits and pieces of your master's illegible script. He was always writing, uh, or he was always secretive about his arcane research, often writing in code. Tried to decipher. You look for the first spells he taught you, carefully flipping the large pages to one of the bookmarks attached to the spine. You can indeed make out some of the basics. Others, you can almost decipher. You gaze around the room, imagining the treasure trove of arcane knowledge hidden amongst the scattered scrolls and torn books. A lifetime of magical study at your disposal. I will not leave until I have recovered my master's knowledge. Plus 10 research. 
Burder, burder. Um, okay, nope. Let's see what we got here. Grimoire. Your master's grimoire is a source of constant discovery and mystical knowledge. There are many pages in it, each belonging to a certain school of magic. You can select unknown spells or secrets to research and cast spells directly from its pages once you've mastered them. Explore the world and grow your knowledge to uncover new pages. Use the bookmark at the bottom to navigate between pages quickly. Uh, oh, I see. Craft four undead. What do we got here? Invest 16 research points. Sure. Research a spell or secret from Grimoire. Simply select research button. It'll take time based on your research. It may require you to accomplish certain actions or spend the ingredients to support your study. Road armor of all units and targeted stack lowering physical defense. Battle-worn troops feel a warm embrace. Their master focuses restorative powers on their location. Uh... Oh, I'm doing Summon Enchanted Wisp. I was like, wait, am I doing Corrode? No, I'm doing Enchanted Wisp. That seems fun. Although, ooh, we got some stuff back here. Death March. Once bodily pain and exhaustion is no longer a concern, millions can be made to march endlessly. Ooh. That's probably like some... That sounds very necromantic. <laughs> uh, and then Craft 4 Undead. Seems like it'll do this. Here we are. Necromancy. This is your Necromancy Crypt. You can create and reanimate a variety of undead minions to flood the lands, do your bidding. Crafting works by investing ingredients that contain essences to reach thresholds. Essences are elemental, arcane, life, and death. The threshold is reached when you combine three, six, or nine of the essences of the same element. You can either drag an item into the slot with the left mouse button or right click. Uh, so here's remains. I don't think I'm going to have enough. <laughs> so... Uh, a greater vigor soul. And then lesser vigorous soul. Maybe, no. Life essence prevent, oh. <laughs> life essence prevents successful necromancy. Wait, where's my life essence? Greater vigorous soul. Undead created out of the soul gain vigor. Uh, I think I'm just missing stuff, right? Yeah, I think I need to <laughs> throw a bandage in there. Oh, you need one of... Okay, derp. Uh, well, I guess we can find some more. Let's go see if there's anything over here. Okay. What about this place? This is... What is this? This is like five chests there. This looks like something I might have to fight for, though. I think I should just... Can I go up here? Do I have to click on that? Hold on, let's just end the turn. <laughs> you have wounded units in the stack. Mortal and fantastic units regenerate a small health each day, while undead have to find a more creative way. Move units into buildings or cast spells to aid with their regen. Okay. On a see if I can get these or if I'm already gathering them oh wait no there we go so I got those nice here's a two so I think that's gonna be easier to fight so we'll probably do that send the turn again I also got my goblin archers next turn uh oh I mean all right <laughs> very good I mean, we are in baby mode. <laughs> so, what are your next steps? The destruction of your master's tower must mean he uncovered something of the all fire secrets, which the circle guards fiercely. Wait. Which the circle guards. Oh, which the circle guards fiercely. I see. I thought it was saying circle guards, not circle is guarding. You restore the contents of his grimoire, but his tower needs rebuilding too. And if the circle is behind his disappearance, you must expect them to come for you as well. Maybe they know of your discovery already. I will not let them stop me. Taking proper stock of your master's laboratory, you find very little more than empty vials and containers that have, like everything else, been searched through. It's certainly not the work of goblins. You can make out tracks of a cart leading to a nearby hamlet you passed on your way here. Did the villagers plunder the tower after it was abandoned too? Oh... 
Different units with your stack can have different movement modes, allowing them to travel further or even across otherwise impassable terrain. A stack must contain only units with the same movement mode to profit from its effect. Alright. I kind of get this mana, though. But doink. Actually, can I get this? Because they left it. So, I mean... Oh, rations and more bombs. Can I get these? Oh, movement restored. Don't mind if I do. The villagers, villages inhabitants eye you with an air of hostility when you arrive. Children are called inside. Some of the villagers arm themselves with tools and sticks. <laughs> Your band regards them cautiously in return. A burly black haired man band brandishing a cudgel steps forward and says, There is nothing for you here. Uh, hey, we don't mean any harm. Villagers barely budge, but after a moment, one of the elders steps forward hesitantly. We were afraid you would bewitch us. The old wizard's apprentice thought they would come after him and take back the items he gave us. We wanted to trade them in the city to buy clothes for our children. I don't care. They belong to me. I have no intention of harming you. Let's trade. Turn goods. Pay a fine. We'll call that even. I have no intention of harming you. Let's trade. Trade? But you... We... Trade? <laughs> the elder stares at you, slow to collect himself and call out to his people. The mage's troops are here to trade! As those around him begin to relax, he leans in to squint at you. You're not playing a cruel trick on us. You really wish to trade for our goods? Uh... Of course not. <laughs> yeah, let's trade. It's just we humbly apologize for our behavior. Now, what would you wish to trade for the goods? Uh, what do we got? Five gold? How much gold do I have? That's 75 gold. I'll give you five. Villagers gladly accept the coin you give them for their wares, but seem happy for you to leave. We get a dark feast? Ooh. Lesser arcane soul. Lesser feral soul. Ritual dagger. Undiscovered faction. We lost money. Ration. Two remains. And that's pretty good. As you leave, you think about the apprentice... You think about the apprentice the villagers kept speaking of. Perhaps you can find them. They may be able to shed some light on your master's fate. Interesting. Uh, so let's go back to necromancy. Can I do something here now? So we have ritual dagger. Dark feast. And then... Once a valid recipe is displayed, confirm the process with the craft button. So we can make skeleton archers with lesser arcane soul. We can make ghouls with the greater vigorous soul. Uh, I kind of like the skeleton archers, honestly. Uh, da, 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 da. More ghoul. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of leaning, kind of leaning towards skeleton archers here. And they get plus two mana per day. Yeah, let's do it. Skeleton archers have been crafted. Where are they? Uh, you've selected a tile containing a stack. Toggle between them by selecting the tile again. Oh, they're being crafted right now. But I have the goblin archers. Can they go join them? They can. Stacks contain several units can be split. If you split a stack, select the units you want to split off via the movement point. Move selected units onto a new hex to create a separate stack. Original will remain the same. Okay. Uh, let's go up here. Oh, we can research again. So we got our summon enchanted wisp. Summons a group of wisps. They are fast scouts that can meld with all fire nodes. Cast a spell. You must select it from your grimoire and amass the required mana to pay its cost, which might take several turns. Each day you automatically invest mana towards completing... The spell. The investment is limited by your mastery, which limits how much mana you can spend on spell casting each day. Once it is ready, the indicator on the left of your screen will flash and you'll be able to cast a spell. That's pretty neat. Uh, I'm also going to do Death March. <laughs> so let's see. Summon Enchanted Wisp. We also have... Oh wait, no, we don't have that yet. So we have to go to the... Oh wait. Hold on. Like the open spell book. Wait. Oh. 
Wait, no spell selected, but that spell. Oh wait, I think I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> End turn. I see. It took. It takes two turns. I understand now. So let's go up here. The ruined tower. The mage's tower is slanting. Its windows are missing, and the gardens are overgrown. Its compound is made up of a number of low buildings in a dismal state. Peaceful, but oddly quiet. No bird song, no small animals rustling in the weeds. The tower's doors stand open and you see stairs leading up and down. One of the closer buildings, probably for servants, is missing its doors entirely. Uh, let's try to find a alchemy lab. You easily find the lab. It looks like most of the tools and materials will st are still here, but some of the glass has been smashed, tables overturned, cabinets broken. We get chunks of meat, ashes, and bone dust. You find glasses containing shiny round eggs and vicious fluid. Next to them, scraps of paper with scrawled images of all kinds of bugs, big and small, incubating inside human bodies, larvae of parasitic wasps. Finally, you see a bug with a crown or some kind of halo. He's crazy. How about the servants' quarters? Looks like those who lived here left in a hurry. There are rusted, rusted pots and pans in a tiny kitchen, chest filled with moth-eaten clothes. One corner, in one corner, a single skeleton lies with an unsettling hole in the back of its skull. Scratches all over the bone. Yo, necromancy, let's speak to the dead. Skeleton twitches, it begins to animate, then twists its skull to look at those surrounding it. The ghost bound to the bone screams. It's eating my head, I can hear it, it's talking to me, it's eating it, get it out, get it out. Until you let the spell dissipate, the rest is garbled nonsense. About the mage's quarter. Chambers, windows are all broken. The wind is carried in. Seeds that sprout from moldy bed sheets in a small box on the nightstand. You find a book, a diary of sorts. Most of it is unreadable, but the writing on the last few pages is big and shaky. An unmistakable warning. One of them is inside my head. I can feel it chewing, making a little cave there. It stings. It sings. Sings to me. <laughs> Orders me around. I will end it. I am so sorry. Gather them. Gather, gather. It is still hungry. Hidden in a hole cut into the pages lies a small gleaming key. Ooh. Uh. Wait, 124? <laughs> bugs? Okay, we're getting attacked by bugs. You exit through the main hall where your torches lights gleam on huge glass jars full of dead bugs of all sizes preserved in a clear, preserved in a clear liquid. As you move past them, you hear a, com a commotion from outside. One of the bugs squirms in its jar and emits a high-pitched screeching. It echoes scream inside. Actually, I want to see what happens if we fight. Oh, probably because we're in, uh... <laughs> we are still in baby. Oh, we're at 215. I didn't realize our strength was that high. All right, wrap it up. Nice. Good experience. They all nest over here. Did I get my, uh, thing here? Nice. Um... All right, well, we've been playing for a while, so I think I think you've gotten kind of the gist of the game. Uh, but overall, I mean, this game is really fun. I think I want to do a uh, I want to do another video or I might stream it, something like that, where I do what I just said earlier. I'm going to go up at a, another uh, tier in difficulty, you know, a bit more difficult of a map and then do the alchemist. I think that'd be fun and kind of see, you know. Uh, obviously, this is like me exploring around, doing whatever, but obviously you're going to get threats attacking your tower. You got to protect it. You got to stay close and build up. So I really liked it. It's, it combines um, it combines so many different styles of video games. You know what I mean? It's got like a, a turn-based strategy. It's got RPG. Uh, it's got, you know, that kind of the 4X top-down. It's got, you know, that uh, the combat. Uh, I was... Uh, is that like 4x combat? I always forget what that style of combat's called, but it has so many different things. Uh, city city managing, like it's it's actually really cool. So if you want to check this game out, you can clink you can <laughs> you can clink you can click the link uh, down in the description below and uh, check it out for yourself. I love the art style as well. Everything's uh, everything's great. It's just a fun game. So thank you again to Spellforce and THQ Nordic for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you next time. Okay? Okay. See ya.